Board of Appeals will now come to order. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood? Present. Mr. Jasoni? Present. Mr. Cole? Present. Mr. Kellman? Present. Mrs. Curley? Present. Motion to accept the minutes from the last regular meeting of December 5th? Oh, so Mr. Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? First case will be number 98061300 O'Leary Place. Petitioner William Butt, you, whatever, to allow demolition and reconstruction of a 9 by 19 first floor addition to an existing single family residence located upon an undersized lot, 4,217 square feet, in zoning district R2 that encroaches within the minimum rear setback. Are you here? Yes. Right oh, come on up here. Give your name and address to the secretary. Uh, my name is Mark Fournier. I'm actually the builder. And uh, yeah, my, I live in Wynn. Yeah. Why do you want to knock this down and start over? Oh, sorry. Say that again. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to knock this down? Uh, the, um, the addition is uh, dilapidated. It needs to be rebuilt. <clears throat> you have plans for the uh, addition? You have plans for the new work? No, not at this time. How come? We, how come? Yeah. Uh, we didn't want to pay the money for the plans. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we, have to know we have to know what you're going to do. It's going to be the exact same thing. That's is the, it the exact same thing? Yes. Same dimensions? Same dimensions. It's just the foundation is deteriorating, the walls, the roof, it's all deteriorating. So is, is the foundation all right? The building? No, it's going to be uh, removed and uh, replaced. I see. All right. Well, the whole idea is to come here. You're supposed to spend the money to come here. You just can't come here and say, we're going to do exactly what it is. Why not? Just gonna, I got pictures there that uh, show what the addition is now. Um, well, I saw it. An exist, there's a plan right there of the existing conditions. The application is pretty specific about what you're supposed to bring with them, isn't it? Yep. Did you read the application? I did. So that would have explained a lot to you. It would explain you how you need to have drawings. You would have to show us everything that you were looking to do. So. We wouldn't need to have that. I thought pictures uh, tell a thousand words. It's uh, pictures of. So you don't have to build it. Yeah, pictures there. Yeah, so if you were explaining what's there, you did a very good job of it. What are yeah, you putting back? That's exactly what's there. I don't you know. It's a thousand bucks. Spend a thousand dollars to have plans made for something that can't be, you know, when I. Yeah, well, everybody else has to do it. Yeah. Everybody comes here has to do that. Really? I didn't know that. Same roof line? Pardon me? Same roof line? Yes, everything is going to be exactly the same. And is it going to blend well with the main house? Yes, yep. The sign is going to match exactly this. That's what I want to hear. Yep. <clears throat> Everything's going to be, uh, doesn't even look like it'll be uh, a, a new addition. It's going to look exactly the same as it does now. But we don't like that. You said it's right. all dilapidated. Don't make it look like it's... Well, no. <laughs> it's going to I mean, be... That's why I'm asking you. Is, are you going to blend it well with the main building? Yes, sir. I, absolutely. I hate to put words in your mouth, but I, you're not giving us the right answers. So these are the two pictures, the front and the back? Yes. What does the side look like? Are there any windows? That's, that, that is the side right there, and that's the side there. The back What about the 19? One private property I wasn't able to take a picture of it. Is there a window on that side? No. Well, you've got some good pictures. That's back here. That was from a fall, too. I mean, that was from a fall, too. <laughs> So have you done any sketches? I mean, have yourself, have you costed the job out? What have you done to show? Have you done anything? No, nothing other than um, <clears throat> fill out the application for this. You know, being a builder, I know it's on the uh, lot line, so, you know, we need an okay from you guys to, to do this, to tear it down and, and rebuild it. 
Um, but it's, it's not going to be any bigger. It's going to be the exact same size you see there, um, the exact same size it says in the, uh, the application. And, uh, is there going to be a door there? The door is actually going on the other side, see? into the backyard. So you change it. We got changes. I said we got changes. Right, you got the other. You do have the other. No. Uh, well, just have the two pictures you showed. Right. Well, where, where that other side side view is, uh, that's where that door is going into their private backyard. Over here. <coughs> you mean this here? The other side of the house. Right there. So you're going to move the deck to the other side of the no, house? Too? There's, well, uh, no, there's just going to be a stairway going down from the door on the side. That deck is being removed. So this is it's going to look going back. You're not going to have a door on the window here? Not on that side. It's going to be on the other side. Well, I guess it's not going back exactly like it is <laughs> in the drawings, huh? No. Any other questions from the board? So you said the deck's coming off. The right? deck is coming so off. The, it's not the, going back. So this, all right. So the issue, the certified plot plan that you gave us here, which was just done a couple of months ago, doesn't have the deck, and it shows the deck on the right, right hand side. Uh, well, the the, the uh, dotted or the slash lines on there is where the work is being performed. <coughs> Oh yeah, I, I realize that. But you, this thing is coming out, right? So you're re you're removing the deck. The deck is coming out. Yes. Are you going to have a deck on the other side? No, there's no. I'm not doing. There's no deck going on the other side as as of the plan right now. Okay. Any other questions? That wouldn't approach, right? That wouldn't approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wouldn't. We have to get a another to come back with some kind of another one, right? Yeah. I think so. Hearing none, are there any anybody here wanna have anything to say about this? Any I know I have any more questions. Hearing none, the hearings are closed for those. Because he's going to make it blend well. Are you going to make it blend well? Blend? Yes, absolutely. Are you hard to hear? Yeah. Yes, I am. Sorry. Didn't put my hearing aids in tonight. Oh, you didn't, you didn't bring a plane, you didn't bring your hearing aids? Well, yeah. <laughs> no one yeah. wishing to speak yeah. in favor. Hearing mm -hmm. none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone speaking in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those <coughs> To speak in opposition. What is the wish of the board? Uh, Mr. Mm. Chairwoman, I would like to request that it be continued till we got at least a sketch showing where the, where the door is going. Um, this, these, these should, this should really be changed. Your certified plot plan. Um, I want to see a sketch that shows. And I don't have to spend a lot of money, but I want to see a sketch that shows the three sides of that of that addition. I okay. my motion. Um, so we'll see where the windows are, we'll see where the stairs are, and if he's planning a deck, then that, I mean, that, that may be something that he would need relief for, because again, it, it's going down, it would be encroaching on the back. Right. Yeah. So you better figure that out. Okay. And whatever it is, just come in. All right. Uh, next meeting. When's that next meeting? February 20th. February 20th. All right, so I, I would request it to be continued with the stipulations that we see a sketch. Oh, second. Showing, um, you know, just a little bit of detail, doors, windows, okay. stairs, I, things like I that. Could, I could do that, right? Yeah. And I'll bring in yeah. copies for everybody, six copies. That's it. Yep. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, so when you take this door off, are you going to put a double hung window on there for each There'll be a window on that side, yes. Double hung, so yes. the egress possibly? Yes. Yeah. In case of an emergency? Yeah. Well, that's, that's one room, so there'll be a door on the other side. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you take away egress on this there, side, so there is going to be a double hung. hung. We saw them get off their heads. <laughs> yes. This will be continued to February 20th. Wait. Thank you both.
continue. So I make a motion to continue. Yeah. And you second it. Second. Motion made by Mr. Cole, seconded by Mr. Calvin. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood? Yes, continue. Mr. Jassan? Yes, to continue. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Kelman? Yes, to continue. Mrs. Curley? Yes, to continue. All set? All set? Okay, thank you. That's great, thank you. Yeah. Bye. Oh, you're still on your pen. Case number 980712 O'Callaghan Way. Parcel number 02335117, petition of Jenna and Diana Diandolo to allow construction of a 16 by 12 deck to the rear of an existing non-conforming single family residence upon an undersized lot, 5,375 square feet, having insufficient frontage, 65 feet, in zoning district R2 that encroaches into the minimally required rear setback. Keep your names and your address to the secretary. Diana Andolo. Diana Andolo. 12 O'Callaghan Way. So I you see the- So you started to work on that, yeah. you? Correct. Yeah. How come? Did somebody start to? Uh, somebody pointed out that we didn't have the oh, right permit. Right permit. Yeah. yeah. We had siding work done, and our contractor had the permit, and then we hired somebody else to do the deck, and turns out he was not doing things correctly, so we ended up firing him, and we had our siding guy come back to look at possibly doing the deck, so he kind of, <coughs> well, he had to redo everything that the other guy did and started from there, but I don't know if he didn't know that he didn't have the permit. Um, I guess that's our job, so, but I mean, we didn't know. Done, has that been approved by ISD? By? I mean, I mean, up to now, has someone, an inspector, looked at and approved it? No, no. What somebody had said, you only have permits for electrical and siding, so we went down to the office to get the permit for the deck, and then, um, we realize that we're too close. So they well, told I mean, us. When, when, do, when do they have you call for an inspection? Not when it's all done. When you, you know, they usually look at the foundation or whatever. Okay. Has anyone been down there? Not that I no. know of, no. Yeah, we went to get the permit. They don't have a permit, so oh, nobody's yeah. been out yeah. from ISD. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's our fault, but we're, uh, we're learning as we go here as homeowners, and uh, we're trying to fix it now, so. Okay. All right, thank you. How high off the ground is the deck? Uh, a little it's above five, five feet. Yeah. So it's coming out the first floor, it's coming out of you with the first floor? Yeah, yes. It's, it's a ranch, so there's only that floor, but the, it slopes down, so mm -hmm. it's high from there. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Nope. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in opposition. What is the wish of the board? Motion approved. Motion approved. Make a motion to approve it. Second. Motion made by Mr. DeSorno, seconded by Mr. Cole to grant. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood? Yes, Mr. Grant. Mr. Jusano? Yes, Mr. Grant. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Callan? Yes, Mr. Grant. Mr. Cole? Yes, Mr. Grant. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Right. Case number 98081010 Minot Street. Petitioner Anastasio. Thank you. Mark Capulos by his attorney Samuel Vitale to allow construction of a detached garage and approaches into the minimally required side yard setback, five feet seven inches, upon an undersized lot, 4,852 square feet, having insufficient frontage, 31.78 feet, in zoning district R4 with a single family residence constructed thereon. I'm attorney Vitale. This is Anthony Scalzos. Um, his parents own the property. Uh, they do not reside there. They live at 15 Kenoma Ave. Uh, he lives there with his growing family. He's growing as we speak. He has two twins, three, 
child 14 and his wife was due yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> so he's got a, a smaller house and a growing family. Um, on, and it's a, a regular shaped lot, which has a right of way which extended to the rear. As I understand on the right of way, it used to be a 12 minor street that became a 20 something Murphy Ave because it now fronts on Murphy. So the, there's a right of way. <clears throat> stockade fence is the property line, there's a chain link fence, and he had put up garages and understood that you could be three feet from the line with an accessory structure, except that this accessory structure is in the front yard and doesn't have seven and a half feet, which is a required side line company. He met with Mr. Uh, Richard, Keith Richards, at the building department, who said that uh, the height's 12 feet, that's fine, it's not more than 15. The lot coverage, as Mr. Reed's plan indicates, uh, is not in excess of 30 feet, but because of the location of the uh, side of the garage, it, it does not have seven and a half feet. He understood it needed three, so it's got more than three, but less than seven and a half. It's got a 5.7 uh, side line. So it was constructed in error, and Mr. Richard told him he had to come and get permission to have the sideline be within the uh, requisite sideline for a, uh, a residence. And that's seven and a half feet, and that's why we're here. Um, the, uh, the garage uh, parks an automobile, has his kids, I uh, saw the basketball toys, toys and things like that. And so um, following the recommendation of the building department, we filed this, Mr. Reed did the plan. Um, he showed parking because you want to see parking, but there's clearly parking spaces as well in the garage. And what we're trying to do is have the uh, garage that was built with less than uh, seven and a half feet be approved. It's got 5.7, uh, but it's still greater than three. A, an, ex, uh, an accessory structure uh, can be within three feet of the, the sideline, but the problem with this accessory structure, if you saw the lot, is it's in the Essentially, it's in the front yard. So he's got the requisite front setback, and he's got the required sideline on the other side, but he doesn't have it on this side, and that's the relief that he seeks. All right, when was the garage built? Uh, October. Did you pull permits? No. Bingo, here we are again. It's a little bit more of the story. So the garage was built. So how did, did somebody say something? How, how, did, how did you get here? You already built the garage. We, uh, Keith Richards visited the property and inspected it. Oh, and he just said, hey. You don't have seven and a half. You feet. don't have a permit either, probably. Right. Yeah, but, but he said you, you, you can't be within uh, the sideline. Yeah. Why did Mr. Richards show up? Uh, there was, I guess, what Mr. Richards had told me was it was an anonymous call. How close is the next building to to the building he's putting up? Excuse me. In the next lot, how close is it to the line? Uh, Your neighbor on uh, <coughs> fourteen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I it's probably, I would say, at minimum eight feet and a half, maybe eleven feet. In between those, I haven't measured. In other words, from the property line to his building, is it like a feet? From, from, the prop, from her property line, because the driveways abut one another, it's probably five and a half feet. No, but I'm saying the building. The building, not the property line. The building. building the, forget the lines, the building. How much space home. is there? This from, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm misunderstanding your question. I apologize. From her building to my building is probably eight and a half feet to 11 feet. Her house to my property line is probably six feet, six and a half feet. No, no, we go How by the feet? distance. You're ten feet from, to, from with the right of way and the, the ten feet. The right of way is ten feet wide alone. So how can her house be within eight feet? Uh, maybe I'm misjudging the distance, but I believe that's about it. I, I think from, it's probably a little bit more than what he's thinking, but it is. It, so it's twenty. It does on that. It's on that line. It's not too far from it, yeah. So the reason that he needs to solve this problem is he wants to yeah. refinance. His parents can't refinance the property, even though they own it without a mortgage, because they don't live there. He lives there, but if they were to convey it to him, he can't get any mortgage because 
when they do a plot plan, he won't be able to get title insurance because he's got the zoning violation. Yeah. So this is a step along the way to have, if this were to be approved, then his parents would deed him the property. Now he would own the property mortgage free. Um, we would solve the zoning problem and then he'd be able to get a mortgage and refinance because as I say, he's got a growing family in the house that was built in 1860, I believe. So he's really got a hardship. Well, you, one. that, yeah, but, but when, I, when they first all came to see me, I said, well, why don't you refinance the property? And they had a very good answer. The bank won't refinance because we own it, but we don't live there. He lives there. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. you've got to get everything lined up. Right. But the problem with getting everything lined up is that you can't get title insurance if there's a, a zoning violation. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Why did you build the garage with a permit? Just curiosity. You didn't think you needed a permit to build? There's it, it's actually a pretty, I'll tell you my answer. My answer was, if originally I had a, a carport there. It was a 20 by 22 carport. It was just plastic with, uh, you know, steel tubing, whatever, whatnot. It was a kit that come, that was an accessory kit to buy, to put on it. And that's how that garage really was built. And then I built an extension off the back of the kit that actually was built as a mobile structure. That's why I didn't think it was necessary for the permit. But from what I understood from Mr. Richards was, because it's in the front, of the house and sitting with the front of the house than I would need. If I had my house in the front and had put that kit in the back, I would have been okay. That's where accessory buildings usually are in the rear. They're not allowed in the front, usually. You still would have to pull a permit, though, to build a, 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 a something bigger than 150 square feet, isn't it? That's your permit for <coughs> The garage. But now it's a building. Yes, it was a kit that I could have done. It was a, it was actually bought as a kit. You, you put on the sides, like instead of the vinyl mm -hmm. top. So that's I, I it was my fault. So we're really not allowing you to build the structure. We're, you're asking to keep a pre existing structure. But it doesn't have the requisite sideline, correct? So I'm saying, but, but the way it's yeah, but the to way, allow the construction. I didn't, well, I'll say again, I don't write the, I, I write the ads, but then someone else writes them. So the way it's worded is not necessarily the what I write. Right. That's what happens. You have utilities out there? You have electric, electricity? Yes. Any plumbing? Uh, no plumbing. <clears throat> You know, this board has to go out and look at every piece of property that comes before us. But there's no way on God's earth that I was going to walk in there with all those cameras and a big sign, you are being recorded, you are being, you know, what, what is all that? Uh, the, the, the original purpose of all those cameras is my next door neighbor. The next door neighbor who runs the body shop there is really not community friendly at all. Uh, he, he doesn't like anybody in the city and I can go on for hours upon hours upon hours. Uh, well, that's all right. I just wonder. I never, I never saw anything like that before. I, essentially, the two cameras that are on the gator is, is focused on his his lot because his he had to deed all the land from the body shop to build his mechanic shop, and it ends up that the sticker line is on Minot Street, and it backs us up in the summer. I've been sideswiped multiple times with my cars because it's resident permit parking on Minot Street. In fact, it recently happened in the snowstorm, and they took out the whole side of my vehicle and was caught on camera. But that is essentially why the cameras are there. Well, I, that, I just was curious, yeah. that's all, but thank you. Any other questions from the board? I can I add one factor. I called Councilor Capano uh, and asked him if anybody had uh, contacted him. He said he had no calls on this matter. Yeah. There's no letter or anything, so. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Hearing that, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in opposition. What is the wish of the board? The petition be granted. Well, the chair will second that. Please call the roll. Motion made by Mr. Yes, Mr. Grant. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Cowan? Yes, to Grant. Mr. Trelly? Yes, to Grant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Good luck with the baby. Yeah. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. Case number 98098 Windsor Ave. Petition of Crystal Barrera to allow alteration and extension of an existing wooden deck that encroaches within the minimum side yard setback attached to an existing non conforming two family residence upon an undersized lot, 3,415 square feet, having insufficient frontage, 45 feet 3 inches in zoning district R1. You want to come over here and talk and give your names and addresses to the secretary for um, Crystal Barrera. And we're at both at Eight Windsor Ave. Is your deck built too? Yes, it is. <laughs> How come? His name is Jesus Feliciano. How come your deck is built? Um, so we um, bought our home with the original deck that was there, the one that's in the zoning, not legal. Jesus. 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 J E S U S. Yep. Feliciano. F Feliciano. L I C I A N O. What's your address? Eight Windsor Road, Saint Thomas. Thank you. Um, so we actually hired a contractor. Someone came out. We got the permit to do it. They did all the work, and then when they came back to stamp the permit saying that the work was done, they said that there was an issue with our existing deck in the zoning area. I guess what Roger told us was that the, um, the original deck was there. Um, it's too close to the um, neighbor's house. Um, but when, when, they, we, when, we, when the deck was done, the deck was, um, the existing deck stayed in the same place. Um, we just extended the other way where Roger explained to us that he can build you know, pass the other way. So we re, we redid the plans again, and we decided to instead of going the original way we were going to go, to leave the, the part where it's closest to the neighbor's house, which is I believe is on um, Four Windsor Ave. Um, the closest is they leave the exact same way. Just re, you know, we change the boards, uh, the rails, and just extend the opposite way. Um, we have pictures of the existing. Um, the existing um, deck is still there. You know the process of when he was doing it and not. Um. I get a question first. Uh, I didn't in my packet get a plot plan for this. Was there a plot plan submitted? Yes. Did you? Did you guys? I think I have. This is what was submitted. All right, this I, is have, a plot I didn't plan see it. This, so. or um, this is what. Plan. This is what. Yeah. Yep, that's what Roger gave us. Um, um, Roger, can you come for for us again? I have it over here if you're looking for it. Oh, you see that. Did you see, did you get one? Can I see that? That's yeah. probably, so this is what you, so yes, you didn't go to, to a, a civil engineer to have them draw the, draw the, yes. draw the deck, right? Yes. You did it, you didn't. Um, we had uh, the, the, whoever pulled the, the guy who pulled the, uh, Our the contractor. Permit, he was the one that drew the, um, the I bet originally he was speaking to Keith. And then from Keith, I guess um, Keith was out of sick that week, and um, Roger ended up coming out for that. Do you want to look at this, Dean? Application say certified flight plan. I'm sorry. Does, does the application say certified certified flight plan? Yeah. You know you're supposed to have a certified plot plan. You know, not not this. But we didn't know. Um, like like I said, the permit was pulled by um, um our contractor, and everything we you know we never we never came to City Hall until Roger came out last. We purchased that home. Last year, we're first time homeowners, so we did it the way that we were told to do it, and I guess we expected that they were telling us it was the right way. 
Where's their application? Did you fill out an application? See if I gave it to him. Yes, what's, whatever's in the front, that's what um, Roger gave us um, to fill out. And then I gave him we him came in and we filled everything out with Roger. He gave. told us exactly I how to put it together exactly. and what you guys needed, and that's how we did it. Yeah, I know, but there's different types of permits. An application for what you need, mm -hmm. did you read it before you signed it? We didn't take care of anything. No. Uh, we, so you our, didn't sign a building permit at our all? Our contractor I'm took care of the permit and all that. He told us that he was speaking to Keith and that everything was all set. But you would have had to sign that even if, that See, even if your contractor pulled the building yeah. permit for yep. it to go through, you have to release okay. with a signature from yourself. Yep. See, I wouldn't know that. Like, this is my I'm first time around, they, so. For them to get a permit, they would have had to sign it. Yeah, right. Yes. So. Someone was lying to you. Yeah, always, always and I'm read, learning that now. Always read things before you sign. Absolutely. Right? Well, I feel like when, when I'm like, okay, I'm gonna hire a contractor. He needs to, he says I'm gonna take care of this, this, and this. That's his job. I'm expecting that he's gonna tell me the right way to do it, Did right? They post a permit. Send the window. Um, so you have one now. You have a copy. Uh, he took it. He took it because there was a, there was some problem at the end. He, um, we came over here to speak to Roger about it, and Roger said that everything that he did passed his inspection. Where the problem that we're having now is the zoning. And you know, like this is this is what you know. After he pulled the boards off and the rails off, that's what it looks like. Um, we basically kept that whole section. Two of my neighbors on the same. We just extended from where the stairs were to the other section where, where we have a really giant rock in our yard. So what are his only violations on that? This was in my it's, jacket. It's, yeah. too the, it's too close. The to corner the corner of the jacket is too close. I mean, you're both speaking at once. No, you are. Um, he said he's stating that um, it's too close to the um, to the house next door. This is one picture. So this is where the deck is, but you can see the fence, the neighbor's fence. I guess we we're supposed to be within seven and a half feet, Roger told us. Yeah. Well, how close are you? What is it? Uh, we're right at the edge. That's how, that's the existing part of the deck. We just, all we did was we finished the, you know, that section. He says it. I mean, you just said it all the hands. Well, it's, it's well, right, right to the I edge mean, of the fence. the board has to know what they what, what they're going to vote on, so you've got to explain it's it. It's like two feet from, it's probably like two from feet, there. Two feet, yeah. There's a space, two feet. Yep. And that's exactly how we purchased it. And when you no, look at the... We, we don't want to hear that. We want to know where it is now. Um, two feet, the same, the same, the same place it was. The other... Um, yeah. Oh, he has a map. Okay. It's on that. So on the map, you see how... You see, you yeah. see the property line, and you see the deck? That's yeah. exactly where it still is. They just went this way. We just mm -hmm. went the other way, towards the, towards the, um, the house. This, right is, this, this is That was probably when they bought the house. It was, yeah. 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 Which, this is all still the same because they used the same frame. So again, <coughs> they just went that way. Yeah, we're not seeing anything with the new dimensions. Right. right. I think the only thing that we have there with the new dimension is what, what the contractor did, the drawing. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. It's the encroachment that we're, that, that we, that's, that that's we're looking it. at. Yeah. Where is it? Where does it end? We can give you carte blanche and you can go all the way over to the other property line. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're far from the other property line. We have a um, giant rock in our yard. We're like 10 feet away from the other neighbor's house. So what he kind of, this is what kind of like Roger just on the line. It kind of looks similar to that up there. And then the, the measurements are another, in another sheet, in another page. Yeah, yeah, that's... that's no, I know, I understand that. I mean, think about it. Like we said, you know, we had no idea what was going on. Um, the, the, the last thing we heard about was when Roger said, you know, that about the Sony, we have to come in and fill out the application he gave us. I think the sheet after that one shows you, um, you know, it gives you the dimensions. I don't need something to sign. But see, this one only goes to the end of the house. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing. Yes. We don't have an accurate picture that shows. We have a picture of the, the front where the stairs end. So, I don't mean a picture, no. picture. I mean a, a drawing that has the dimensions. No, we, on it. we don't. That's what that's what um, our contractor did. I, I, he was speaking to Keith the whole time, back and forth. Um, you know, the original way we wanted to do it was we wanted to close in, you see where that box is, we wanted to close in the whole thing coming out of our, our deck door. And then he told us since we were in this, too close to the zoning, he told him since we were too close, you know, um, we couldn't build it that way. So that's why we decided to go the other way. 
and then Keith was sick that week, and Roger ended up coming out. But you know something? This this isn't about Keith and Roger. This is about you guys. Okay. Yeah. And even if, if there was something that should be that could be signed off on, I'd feel better until I knew what the dimensions of the yeah. deck were, right. so that we can say, yeah, we approved a deck that's yeah. ten feet wide and. I thought there was 30. something in there. Can I see that? In the yeah, the Oops, sorry. Well, there's no clarity there, you know what I'm saying? So this is all this is right. He's saying it doesn't show like no, how far from the other house. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, it no, I understand what you're saying. You know, um, it, it won't show because it's like we're right at the tip, just like it shows on the, on the original picture. You know, the fencing comes in and, you know, the house is in an angle, you know, the, yeah, the, 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 it's, in, it's in an angle. You so need to like, mention the end of the existing deck as it's built now to the property, not the one that it touches. The okay, other. the other side. We want to know what that dimension left okay. in real life yeah. is mm -hmm. by somebody who can stamp the drawing, like okay. Reed or a land surveyor. And it's pretty simple to get. You'd have to just call, because the deck's already built, right? Mm -hmm. They'd come out and they'd repin what's there, and they'd give you a drawing that looks like this, with their information on it. Okay. And it's gonna give you a dimension from the end of your new deck to the property line. And basically, I think that's what you're asking for. Yeah, I mean, right? every, every, one, every case we've had, oh, Callahan Way, there's one right there. This is Minor Street. That's what we're looking for, so that we can we can it can, we can get signed off on it, and then it gets registered as a registry of deeds. Okay. And it says this is the size of the of the debt okay. that's encroaching on. So it's basically the same dimensions I have here, but you know, you know, because yeah. this is the same dimensions. You need to have somebody you know, just come out and do it for you. Okay. okay. You, you see your mortgage, um, the uh, the plan for your mortgage that's yep. in that lives in there, yep. mm -hmm. something like that that shows now the new dimensions okay. of the debt. Okay. Could do that. Okay. Do you know? Uh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We want to go the right way. I mean, you know. But that way, it's that way it's illegal too. Nobody can ever. Yeah. It's all right. Mortgage. When you sell it. Yeah. Right. So maybe that's one thing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none. The hearing is closed. For those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Hearing none. The hearing is closed. For those wishing to speak in opposition. What is the Will of the board. Motion to continue pending the platform. Second. Motion made by Mr. DeSono, seconded by Mr. Woods, to continue to February 20th. 20th. Thank, Thank you. you. Will we have to fill out an application or we just come to 20th? No, just come. Yeah, awesome. You've already got an application. So. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Case number 9811559571 Summer Street. Petition NS Holdings LLC by his attorney Samuel Vitale to allow conversion of an existing institutional structure located in zoning district BD that encroaches within the minimally required front setback to residential use. I'm a German Italian. I made a mistake and told the architect I didn't think we'd get reached this early, so he's not here, but I, I can. Oh, uh, yeah, all right, I did. I didn't see him. So he is here. So with me is the architect, Phil. We've gone through cycling review, a special permit from the city council. I will tell you that up until then, we thought we had all the approvals that were required. But cycling review, a question was raised, and I think I may have submitted the site plan review uh, letter, in which they said a variance was required, and then we, we pursued that as to why there was, uh, I can probably bore you with the answer. Um, I think everyone here is familiar with the St. Michael School, the St. Michael's Church, and St. Michael's Record. They're on the corner of Cottage and something. When you're on a corner, you have two fronts. So you have a front on Cottage Street and a front on Summer Street. 
When you're a church, the first, and when you're in a business district, there is no required front setback. Um, the only uh, dimensional regulations that apply in a business district are 50 feet of frontage and height not more than five stories. Putting that aside, when you're in institutional use, like a church or a school, you can go in any district. So the school's been there many, many a year, and the church, and it has a long uh, historic significance in the city of Lynn for the Polish community. Um, the church closed, um, <clears throat> the buildings were maintained, and ultimately um, the properties were uh, put out uh, for sale by the Roman Catholic Archdiocese. The uh, Catholic Church owns property under what's called the corporate soul, not S-O-U-L, but S-O-L-E, which means one person owns it all. And that one person is Sean Cardinal O'Malley. He owns everything. And so they originally had a plan that they wanted not to sell the land, but they wanted to lease it for 99 years. But then they realized that if you're in a development where you can't really get financing, so then they, they changed their position. And when they did, and the counselors were involved in this, counselors uh, Walsh uh, and Capano, because they didn't want to see a business there, and they wanted to know what kind of a residence would go there. So they were involved in all of this. But ultimately, North Shore Holdings became successful because they approached it from a different perspective, which was they weren't going to tear down the school and the rectory and the church. They were going to maintain those buildings, but they were going to uh, do refurbishment and alterations and convert them uh, for residential use as a condominium. So that went through and got city council consent, and then we went to site plan and review, and it was there that this issue got raised. And the reason for it is if you look at the plan, you'll see that the schools, the schools always had the same setback since the day it was built, but it doesn't have now for residential use the requisite and uh, required front setback is supposed to be 10 feet. So it doesn't have 10 feet from Carter Street, nor does it have 10 feet from Summer Street, the two fronts. Uh, that's the school. The next building is the church. The church would make the requisite front setback of 10 feet for residential use, except the proposal, uh, as shown on the plan, is to, as you come down the front steps of the church, to enclose that. When you enclose that and make it like an entryway, then it becomes part of the structure, and then when it becomes part of the structure, then it doesn't have a 10-foot setback. So on that one, I sort of agreed with them that it needed that because of that. But the others, I, I, the building's there, and, and it, it met the then current uh, front setback requirement. But because of the site plan review approval, and because the site plan approval uh, is conditioned upon solving that problem, that's why we're here. So what you're going to see is it's going to look like the church, the school, and the rectory, except they're going to be uh, residences, and they're going to be condominiums. And one of the things that uh, it's going to be called the St. Michael's Condominium, we're going to uh, recognize the, the long history of the people who uh, built that uh, and developed that by in the little landscaping area that we're going to have, we agreed to put a, a plaque or some kind of memorial to, to recognize the fact, notwithstanding that that's going to be the name of the entity. Um, and then the other part of it that made it uh, somewhat difficult to develop is that the, uh, the sellers <coughs> had many requirements about what they would not allow on the land. And they are part of uh, the deed restrictions. And notwithstanding my view and the Supreme Court's view that deed restrictions can't last for more than 30 years, the restrictions that they have, because my clients have agreed, are in perpetuity. But they're unrelated to any residential use. It, uh, so we took the, that's the other reason I think these people were successful. They were willing to take it, not only maintain the buildings, but they were willing to take it with the restrictions that uh, the seller wanted to impose about any certain kinds of uses that weren't necessarily incompatible with what my people proposed. So I think that's one of the reasons they got selected to develop the property. So it's 20 residential condominiums, no, no business condominiums, no. just no. residential. The, the, if you look at the special permit, the city council only had one condition, and that if there was any change in the plan, it would have to come back to the city council. Yeah. 
So what are they going to do with this school? Are they going to point all the brickwork and everything? Now we're up beyond my uh, Now we're in and not my expertise. Yeah. Yeah. The question was, are they going? What are they going to do with the brickwork on the are existing they do school? With the masonry? The masonry, uh, it's going to remain if it needs repairs, it will be, they will be repaired, repointed. Yeah, um, whatever, needs, yeah, whatever needs to whatever be needs repaired will be repaired, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, because it does need some areas. Yes. Yeah, we will be, we'll be doing that in the permit, the building permit phase. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about the rectory? Is there any relief? requested there on that rectory? No, the rectory actually has a requisite setback. The rectory was a residential use already there. Yeah, right, sure. So that in effect, there was a mixed use. It was, uh, believe it or not, uh, a rectory is recognized for, ch for church purposes, but a rectory from the building department world is a residence. Yeah, so it's pretty clear. Cut. Yeah, and now I think what, what the other part of this, if you look at the site plan approval, is that uh, and I brought with me the old assessor's map. This used to be p separate passes, and right. that was another issue, the chain of title. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, what we're going to do is record what's called a lines of existing ownership, a perimeter plan, and make it all one big parcel, right. one big piece, and that's why the relief that we're seeking would work for both of those corners, cottage and summer, where the front's at. Right. Sounds like a good use of the property to make really Well, it took how long? Uh, well, the design, design phase took a few months. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah, oh, I imagine. Well, it's pretty intricate there. Huh? So there's two floors in the church. There'll be two floors. Not uh, three. Three, including. Uh, if you go up the stairs, you get the main, the main. Right, the main sanctuary. Yeah. And, and then, then we're adding a floor. Yeah. And then there'll be an attic also, or it'll be yeah. a, a usable space, uh, a master suite. Yeah. Similar to what. Uh, some people did on South Street, the old South Street. Right. Church did the same. The same yeah. exactly. Pardon me? South Street. The old Greg House? Oh, Before yeah. Greg House, it was a South Street yeah. Methodist Church. The cemetery. Same, same, same idea. And how many years altogether? 20. 20? And they're marked rate of harm, so they're No, they're kind of any. And that's all they're not Yeah. Any other questions from the board? And how many bedrooms altogether? Two bedrooms. Two, yeah. The uh, church will have uh, a couple of the units, I think, will have three. Because they're up and down? Up, up, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, like the townhouse. Nice. Yeah, will they have a mezzanine in there now? Uh, yes. They, yeah. No, what is the basement? Is it a hall down there? <coughs> Um, the hall in the church, I'm not sure what will be done to it. I think it'll just common space, uh, utilities, uh, laundry, things like that. <coughs> yeah. That was a very active uh, parish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think this is a good fit for this particular. Yeah. It will make that whole corner look so much better. Yeah. Be an asset. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? I have none. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this project? Anyone here wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, the hearing is closed. For those wishing to speak in favor, anyone in opposition? In opposition? Hearing none, the hearing is closed. For those wishing to speak in opposition, what is the wish of the board? Motion made by Mr. Callan, seconded by Mr. Woods to grant. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood? Yes, to grant. Mr. Gisoma? Yes, to grant. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Callan? Yes to Grant. Mrs. Cole? Yes to Grant. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Case number 9810-150 Essex Street. Petition of Paul Yu by his attorney, John Myholz.
to allow conversion of an existing two-family structure located in Zoning District R4 upon an undersized lot, 5,180 square feet, with front, rear, and side yard encroachments to a three-family structure. I have some Frank Street men representing the petition. The petition is to uh, allow conversion of two family to a three family house. I've submitted plans, four plans, assuming I think they were submitted. We had it in here about a year ago and it was withdrawn. So we thought it was part of the petition in the first place. In addition, I submitted a packing plan. The petitioner has met with Council Seer, who brought us in, had discussion with him. Council Seer said he was in favor of the petition as so long as he sent out <coughs> conditions that he wanted to uh, be applied to the petition. And we've been told about the conditions and we're willing to abide by the conditions as stated. This is a letter from Council President Sear. I respectfully request that if the above mentioned petition is approved, the board place a stipulation that where the driveway is located, that the owner at his expense install a curb cut and repair the sidewalk with concrete to add adequate parking for the side. I know that the owner has spent a lot of money repairing this property. However, as the Ward 3 Councilor, I know that this neighborhood has issues in the winter months with the stove due to the large number of multifamily homes. Thank you in advance for your assistance in this matter, Daniel P. Zia, Council President. We agree with that. <coughs> we understand that to be the case. I stated we had a meeting at the location with Council Zia, and we wanted the changes of the assumption of that uh, change by the petitioner in order for this thing to be, this be granted. We're willing to abide by it, he will assume all costs. What's in here? That I'm just looking for the There may be something in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this what you want? Awesome. Yeah. I don't I'm stated by Council CLEs. Mr. So you has spent a lot of money in furnishing the building, improving the building. Did you get the point, right? Yeah. You're putting a new dormer on. Yeah. You got a weak side, new siding. He put a new dorm on the attic. Fence. Side. Oh, oh, side. 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 Oh, the color or you talk about? No, no, I'm talking about the yeah. material. Yeah. Material. Seven. Eight bedrooms and that house. Come on. Yeah. I don't know if it's hot or not. Yeah, can you get a permit to do that? Vinyl side. I think it's vinyl side. It looks like vinyl side. Oh, vinyl? Yeah. Oh. That's what's in existence. Oh, it is. That's what I'm right now, yeah. It's going to match what's there. Yeah, right. So as you're looking at the building from the front, it would remain the same exterior. Yeah. The dormer is built in the back. All right, so the dormer is going to blend well. Two bedrooms. 
It would be That's exactly what it would be. Yeah, it doesn't look right now. Yeah. Mm. Why do you want the third floor? Because the place is vacant, you know. Vacant. Yeah, it's an existing third floor. Yeah, it's vacant. So you want to say it's an attic. Third. It's an attic right now. Well, it's a big, you know. It should be, uh, I think they used, they used to live before. I think it's a dorm. They have a bedroom. Yeah. Do you live in this house? No. So, so, so it's property for you. It's an income property for you. That's correct. It's a lot of bedrooms. There's over nine or ten bedrooms in the whole property. You would be willing to restrict the amount of bedrooms. I'm sorry. Two bedrooms each four bedroom units. Bedroom. No, so we don't have to make that. No, it's part of the Yeah. Put a condition on it that it only be two bedrooms. So we willing to reduce that to two bedrooms. Exactly. Bedroom. I think that's a good fit. Yeah. yeah. And what is yeah. the dormer for? Yeah. The dormer. Right. You're going to put a dormer put on it? The dormer for the back of me, even a dormer. Better. Did you hear that, gentlemen? They'd be willing to go down to two bedrooms for each floor. That's condition, no objection. Well, this is going to be going to go with the rest of the rooms. Yeah. Right? That means you're talking. Yeah. You're going to take if a you've got a two bedroom, you're knocking out. What are you going to do with that extra space? What's it going to be? What, yeah, what is you that? and I both know it's going to still be a bedroom. <laughs> I mean, just because you're not calling it a bedroom anymore doesn't mean it's not going to be a bedroom. You've got rooms out here now that you want to bet you that are bedrooms now that aren't. They call them studies. And, uh, yeah, the living rooms and all these things that are attached to bedrooms, we all know they're bedrooms. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. We, we know they are. We'd be willing to come in with a reconfiguration of the plan. You so could. You could, you, could, you could redesign the plan. Exactly. Sure. The stipulation. It's just, I mean, you're, you're opening up a lot of wide open room. That would be good. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, we're willing to come in with a reconfiguration. Yeah, that would so be that good. So that would make the rooms larger and make it fit within the parameters of the two bed. Sure. I do want to look at that. Michael, so what does this mean? Yeah, no question. Because it looked like another room that didn't say know. anything on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, as stated, I will come in with a reconfiguration to limit the use of the rooms. So two bedrooms, it's four. Did I mean, you buy you this in um, 2016, January? Yeah. So. Okay, how long would it take you to get a new plan ready? Next you next have meeting. ready for the next meeting? For the next meeting. Good. Right. Before you go spending any yeah. money, you're going to have to come in and really convince me that there's not going to be 10 bedrooms in this structure. So if you, if you don't think you can do it, don't spend the money on the drugs. That's, I'm just giving you... Well, I understand that. I don't want to see you do a good money after that. bad, you know, but if you, if you can't come in and solely convince me that there's not, you know, 10 bedrooms in this house, don't bother. And we understand your problem with it, we'll, we'll correct that. Yeah, I, I frankly don't see what the hardship here is where, you know, the, the, the sale price for two family, it's probably worth a lot more than what he paid for it. So to me, this is just a, this is just an add another unit from income property. I, I don't really know, what, I don't see the hardship here at all. So this is a, I don't, I don't know. I got issues with this one. And you know, even, even the council president's letter, you know, if you grant it in, I know that the neighborhood has, you know, parking issues. It's not a wholehearted endorsement mm -hmm. for this plan at all, as far as I'm concerned. So, that's, that's, that's how I feel about it. I just feel like historically, John, this court has not looked there about increasing two to three in these kind of neighborhoods. I understand just like, that. Just like Jan said, you know, good money up the bat, I need to see you do that. Well, I'll speak with my clients. We'll come in with the request that be continued to the next meeting. Sure. I'll always come back in and address you again. Yeah. 
Any other questions from the board? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone in opposition? In opposition? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in opposition. What is the wish of the board? Uh, go along with what the attorney wants to continue to February 20th. So I'll make a motion that we continue it to February 2nd. 20th. Motion by Mr. Cole to continue this to February 2nd to reconfigurate the rooms. Seconded by Mr. Callan. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood? Yes, continue. Mr. Chisano? Yes, to continue. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Callan? Yes, to continue. Mrs. Cole? Yes, to continue. Boston Street, and I hope not. Right, but I, I see it on here, but I don't know if anybody else got a notice. That's why I was asking. So all we have left is Nahan Street, right? I didn't miss anything. One. Continued case, petition of 139 Ahan Street, LLC, by its attorney Samuel Vitale, to allow basement alterations to an existing non conforming two family residence in zoning district R5, located upon an undersized lot, 6,312 square feet, having insufficient frontage, 47 feet 66 inches, and existing parking spaces within minimally required setbacks to create additional residential dwelling space for human occupancy below street level grade. And this was continued, I believe, for one of the things was the parking. As I understood it, it was continued uh, for a view. I was actually, yeah. I was actually yeah. at both, but I was late. Yeah, but that second. one of them was the parking. Excuse me? One of them was the parking, too. Also. Yeah, also. I so, so let me just. Well, I know that uh, there were two site visits, and if, so those of you who were there saw that the uh, second means of egress is being constructed. Those of you who entered the building saw that the kitchen was there and that the, the layout of the unit was there. The question was the access to the parking. I know that uh, the clerk told me that uh, the adjoining property on this deed was submitted. I know we submitted our deeds and um, and then let me just say that since then, I was contacted by an attorney on behalf of the uh, abutter, uh, Mr. Snow. Uh, and that was a good development uh, in that I think that uh, Attorney McGloin, who represents uh, Mr. Snowden, as I understand it, uh, was able to explain uh, what registered land means with respect to the uh, existence of the right of way over of Mr. Snowden's uh, property. And uh, there's also, uh, I know Mr. Snowden has used it according to uh, Attorney McGoin for many, many years, um, but that there were concerns. And so uh, I spoke with Attorney McGoin, and then I made a proposal to Attorney McGoin, and I want to just tell you, as I understand it, that if these conditions were to be satisfied, then I think it would be a win-win for everybody. Uh, and I, let me explain why. <clears throat> we have registered land. Um, one of the good things about registered land, if you're a registered land owner, is that someone cannot claim what's called adverse possession or easement by prescription, which means, hey, I've used this, uh, I think I've given the example in the past, 
people cut across somebody's lawn to go to the beach, and they continue to do it, and they continue to do it. And even though they may not own it, uh, they may have a right to continue to do it because it's been done if you can prove all of the elements of adverse possession. But if you have registered land, the, the theory of adverse possession doesn't prevail. You could have used it, but it's not registered, it's not recognized by the land court. So the use of the land, or putting even a structure on a, a, a property that has adverse, that has registered, been registered with the land court, you can't get ownership of it. So the fact is that the plan that exists and the two deeds, Mrs. Snowden's and the petitioners, both contain the same language. And that language says that Mrs. Snowden's land is subject to this right away for the benefit of the petitioner's land. So that it means that the petitioner has a right to use that portion, even though it's within the bounds of Mrs. Snowden's property line, to access their property. So that's the reality. Okay. But not to park there, right? Excuse me? Not to park there. Well, we come to that. The petitioner doesn't propose to park there. The question is whether anybody can park there. Um, I understand that from Mrs. Snowden and her attorney that she in fact has parked in the right of way. But she parks under her deck. Well, we're going to come to you're ahead of me. You're getting to the end of the story. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Um, so, there were certain questions that were raised that were legitimate questions. One of them was the gate. Okay? And that we, we only have what's called anecdotal, historical uh, information about the gate because my people haven't owned it and haven't been there as long as Mrs. Snow. Okay? But there's no question there's a gate. You saw it. And I think Mrs. Snowden's concern was its appearance, it's in disrepair. So we have a simple solution on the gate. Take it down. Take it down. <laughs> so remove it, okay? The second was that um, apparently that all these years Mrs. Snowden has paid somebody to plow the way because it's not a street. It's, it's not an accepted, what they call accepted public way. So she's borne the expense solely to have it plowed. And if it needed maintenance, which it may, you know, paving or whatever. Um, <coughs> so to address that, um, Attorney McGloin asked me and I asked the petitioners if they would agree, and they did agree, that if in fact um, they were going to use it to access the rear of their property, that they would then enter an agreement to share the cost of uh, plowing, maintenance, and whatever. And further, uh, that they, that be memorialized uh, in a written document because registered land, I mean this property has been owned since, and been with, with this right away since 1946 and nobody's going to be here forever so that we want to make certain that subsequent owners, be it successes here or successes there, are bound by the same arrangement. So that was agreeable. And then, as you pointed out, um, and I think I said it when Mr. Gersono had some questions, we, we don't want to deprive uh, Mrs. Snowden of her ability to park on her property. It's just we want to be able to access. And so I understand from Attorney McGloin that there's a tenant at Mrs. Snowden's who parks under the deck and that uh, Mrs. Snowden believes that she can park under the deck. And that just takes me to the last part of what I had in this letter, which is that we wanted to be certain if people, instead of parking parallel in the right of way they're parking uh, perpendicular under the deck that when the time comes to plow, we can get the plow down and around and, and, and plow it up. I don't know how they do it now. So all of that was uh, put in a letter from me to Mrs. Snowden's attorney, which I'd be glad to share with you and indicate that um, should the petition be granted, then we would uh, agree to those conditions as part of the uh, uh, approval, and we think it's again the newest to the benefit of only the only people really in the world who care about this is Mrs. Snowden, who's lived there for many, many years, and the petitioner who is going forward to sprinkle a building that wasn't sprinkled, putting a second means of egress to a basement apartment that didn't have it, and doing everything that was required under the state building code to make it a lawful unit. Uh, Sam, I have a question. First of all, I'm Bob Lavoy. Um, Irene Snowden's son-in-law. Okay. Yeah, but when it's your turn. Okay. We don't, All right. You know, don't worry. We're going to get to you. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if there's enough room under that deck for two cars. 
Well, I remember seeing, when, 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 when Mike was raised, that issue about can you plow, um, I remember seeing a car under the deck. Well, why don't we ask Mrs. Snow? Yeah. Can you park yeah, two cars? It goes down straight no, like can this. Can you park two cars under the deck? Then it rears off like this, so I have, it's not 14 feet all the way down. Oh, it it's narrows. 14, yes. It, no, why? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the answer. We, we, think, we think you can get two cars. Yeah. Okay, yeah. down here like without a problem. See, that's one thing and the right of way would still be there. That's one thing about parking you can't think. You okay. have to know. I'd right. like to see that. That's, right. why, that's why I'm going to yeah. get a stipulation yeah. that yeah. this whole thing be a professional land surveyor to draw it all up. Like the two lots you get on the other side, and then you get one in the and, and everything, include everything in one package, even include that wording on the letter, and I think it would solve the whole thing. Well, we could, we could do, we could do what's called, you know, the sketch plan, the segment plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I'm trying to avoid, okay, is the, the land court is like, out of the days of Charles Dickens. No, no, I know because it's So to get a plan approved in the land court no, takes like an plan. act of Congress. Yeah. So, however, if you do what's called a segment plan or a sketch plan, yeah, right. That's then we could we could attach it to the agreement, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's fair enough. Solve everything, and you can proceed with your project. Um, any other questions for me? I have no question. Well, what, I'm wondering, what is the hardship with this? The hardship? Yeah. Why do we have to have well, this third Well, that line? would have been an appropriate question in 1939 when the Board of Appeals granted the variance to make a basement apartment. Well, here we are today in 2018. Yeah, but, but the difference is, in 2018, this building will be <coughs> state-of-the-art fire safe, have a sprinkler system, have a second means of egress, have a hard wire system. So that's one choice. Or well, the other choice is it can exist the way it is without a sprinkler, without a hard wire system. And without the basement unit. The basement unit can be occupied because it will then become part of the first floor. But, but the difference is the building won't be sprinkled and it won't have to be hard wired. You only have to sprinkle a, a, in a class group three. All right? I got one. <laughs> The arrangement won't be worked out for the neighbors. Well, then, right. Then what's the incentive for my people to not stand on their rights and say, we're driving down it every day of the week? 1939, right? Yeah. With the stable or garage. The first and second floor apartments, right? Over here, this is well, the additional Well, they need to get some kind of variance for parking with it, you know, that close to yeah, the structure. I don't either. No. I, I think that the, the parking requirement design standards are within Five feet of the, we, we asked for that, right? Five feet of the property line and the street line. The right of way is not a street. Right. Is that in there, a buffer between the property and the edge of a parking space? Okay, I, was, I was just <coughs> Their property? Yeah. Right after that. Mm. I don't think that they're within five feet of the say why? property line. No, because no, no, obviously there's no, no, opposition. You have to have a five so foot buffer. She withdrew it, she got a money buffer. Well, ask them I think we're, they're, they're further up. I have both of the plane, but are you so are you guys now for this? Are you changing? You were you seem to be against this a month ago, right? Or the last time we were here? Right. Are you now for this? Have you worked you guys all worked out an agreement that this is no issue for you anymore? Well, let me put it this way. The law is the law. And if I the law says that I can't park there, then I have to leave it open going to see to it that that happens. Even though I don't like the idea, um, and I'm going to try to, uh, I have one car that parks underneath the porch, and that's my basement tenant. And like it's going to snow tomorrow, we're going to try to tandem park. In other words, put one car and then my car behind it until we yeah. plow. And then I'll pop in the front. Sounds like you try to make it work. Well, it, that's what it's all about. I mean, it's people. 
Now, can yeah. I show you People have to give a little bit to get yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, none, of, none of that really has to do with the three family. I'm, I'm kind of, are you opposed or, or for the three no, family, we, I guess we, is my question. We have some concerns, yeah. okay? And the concerns are, um, you know, we've always taken care of them right away. You've got to understand Mrs. Snowden has had this for 60, 60 years yeah. almost, okay? And she's parked there for 60 years. And now somebody's saying you can't park there anymore. Right, so that's a big disruption. You know, she's paid taxes, um, she's maintained the property, and she's maintained that right away for her cost. She's tarred it, she's maintained it, she's plowed it, okay, for 60 years. And then somebody comes and says, well, you know, we need the right away now, all right? And like she says, if it's the law, it's the law. You know, she was able to work it out, but. You know, she just Stone. wants to make some concessions to make sure she has parking available. She's been there 60 years. I have a question. Do you remember that this property came before the Board of Appeals back in 2000 to make it a three-family? Do you remember that? This is the same petition that, that we're hearing. Um, Paula Modica owned it at the time. Uh, yeah. And she brought it to this board and then it was withdrawn. You don't remember that? No. So did you deny it at that time? Well, I don't, I don't know why it was uh, withdrawn. It say. Usually that means it wasn't going to pass at the time, but I don't What's know. What's wrong with our prejudice, Robin? Um, the petitioner got her money back, and I just didn't know if you remembered that. No, I don't. I didn't know she approached, approached her with it. I'll show you the tally. When, when I look at this from November 9th, 1939, it says uh, permit for repairs and alterations. I guess that used to be a stable and a garage. Uh, convert existing stable and garage to two family dwelling. Raise the building and la la la. That, that's, a different, that's a different property. That's 141. That was at the rear. So what, what the address that? of this is 139. All right, but you're the one that brought up that the petition was a... Uh, no, but I'm just saying, it, it, here's well, the hardship. The hardship's to everybody who... You understand that whether somebody's maintained it, parked on it, done whatever, I explained to you, and it's not my people. It's the law in Massachusetts. This is a registered parcel. You cannot get adverse possession or easement by prescription on registered land. Now, the fact that people haven't driven down that right away doesn't mean that these people don't have a right to drive down that right away. And as I said to you, I think at the last hearing, nobody wants to deprive Mrs. Snowden of anything. If you should be looking at it from the perspective of, we have a right to the rear of that property for, for whatever purpose. It says, for whatever purpose the streets are used in the city of Lynn. And so, whether it's a two-family or a three-family, a right exists to get to the rear of that property. There was a gate. We removed the gate. So now we, we've removed the gate. Now in terms of access, the only people going down there are going to be these folks and Mrs. Snowden. And so how, if they can get along and have that utilized, and everyone winds up essentially with a better piece of property next door, with a roadway that she now pays 100% of the expense to maintain that she no longer will because she got somebody else who will pay, and you have a property that before had only, uh, on a good day, two parking spaces, and now it has available three more. It seems to me that this petitioner ought to get some consideration for what the value is that they're adding to that area by providing parking that wasn't otherwise there, maintaining a right of way and sharing in the expense that was being borne by one individual, uh, and modernizing the uh, structure with a sprinkler system and a hard wire system. It seems to me that at the end of the day, there's a benefit to the city, to the petitioner, and to Mrs. Snowden. Madam Chair, no question. We talked about, at the site visit, about moving those two parking spaces down <coughs> closer to the main building. Yeah, this is, what, like, what, no, I what is this building? Uh, remember they had the two yeah, parking spaces kind of far at the that? end of that? It was out back. I know you want yeah, to know. Which, are you talking about the two in the drive on the <coughs> nine? Oh, that's a different, yeah, on the back side. Yeah, yeah they were going to move and take the two that 
much closer to the building. Right, because there's, there's, there's a stairway, a little step that goes up to this side. But you're talking about the right parallel side. Right up to the garage, yeah. and the door, and put those two. So then it's for uh, a lot closer to the. Yeah, well, well, that's, that's what I thought that Mr. Callender wanted to plan the children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to plan the story. So I think so there would, there's no misunderstanding. I think you're talking about, let me get my bearings here. You were talking about. Where's the problem? Right. So you're talking, instead of putting them here, putting them in there. They're going to be down here, I think, yeah, right up to the garage, which is yeah. right about here, yeah. Right. And then it's a, a much, much easier uh, access. Just seemed like a good plan, even for everybody concerned, because even the people that were down these ones, they would know that those two were, you know, not theirs. So is that the plan with the fire parking? This is this is the one that shows on set. The two that were within the five foot. Yes. The one at the rear right end of the right of way. And this is we were talking about here, but you're talking about that. Oh, so you could have seen it all there. saying you want to see where these guys are? Well, she passed now being from this one. Right, yeah. Two of them, I thought I saw two of them there. Yeah, that's what I thought too. So that what that I think that's what the plan is the calendar wants to see. Yeah. Is with not only showing the spaces on this lot, but the ones on this lot and over here. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's what I was asking. How am I going to draw those ones next to the house there and try to certify it because they're too close? Who wants it right away? The, the, are, are they yeah. have, they, their spaces? City? It just seems like they're willing to applaud them. Well, this is your property. Yeah, yeah I know, but you, with the ones that are parking like this. Yeah. Are you it's, a joint, it's a joint right venture. Right yeah. Right yeah. They both do. Both, both lots. You and yeah. you. Oh, okay. Both lots on yeah. So you know, whether this happens or not, it's so coming on so that. The, the, the city is not responsible. They don't own it. So if this property flies or not, they should help take care of it. Under the deck, you don't have that five foot buffer there. She would have to change. Well, that would show up on the professional. Well, you're saying five five foot in, five foot that side. Yeah, they want to be deck. I mean, that was what was proposed to me by uh, Attorney McGloin. That's what my clients agreed to. Maybe that would be part of an overall global kind of agreement. Well, huh? we we agreed to, we agreed to try and work the situation out for all parties involved. Well, that's what we tried to do, right? But as long as she has some parking, because she doesn't really want. It. Well, I have a question about how many parking spaces are you going to put down? We're going to have the requisite number. In the back area. Though. So we, we comply with the zone ordinance because to have a three family, you need uh, five spaces. For a two family, you need three. I understand. She's asking right. how many you get right away. Professional landscape. At the end of the right away? Yes. Yeah. One. Yeah, because it's two in front already? Yes, yeah, she's also asking. That's Show the plan, maybe. Professional landscape. There are two spaces that currently exist here in the front. They're right here in the driveway. And then so at the end of the right of way we propose one. And what they're talking about is my people own the rest of the land around here, so they're looking at two spaces there. Because in the environment house district, which is this, you can have one. So they would get to five by one, two, three, four, five. Excuse me? No, no, this is a separate copy, the great difference. This is on this is Lovin Beach. All they need is a gate of respect to get down to the block and it's not going to be there. But we would have five because it serves the black house. It doesn't go on, it's gone. Yes. Any other questions from the board? I have anyone, anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this position? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak, speak in favor. Anyone in opposition or trying to make up their mind?
Yeah. Well, you're you're going to come up and give your name and your address, please. Susie Davis, Red and Rose, Wampscott. Did you get that? I just have a concern over Beach because the property owners beside Mrs. Snowden's property also own the properties on Beach. And if you have that parking behind through the right of way, it will have access. And my concern for her, as well as everybody's safety, is anyone coming from Beach wanting to come towards Tudor? The answer is no. The plan doesn't show that. The Thank you for letting me finish. Yeah. Excuse me? Thank you for letting me finish. Well, it's always good to hear from people from Swanson, so I'm glad to hear them. Don't be disrespectful. I'm not being disrespectful. Yes, it's, a, it's a point of fact. I'm going to get a chance to stand by. All right, all she has, has, she has the floor, right? I mean, all fans. No, but it's understandable what he's saying, but you have the floor. Thank you. Um, whether it's, I, I think it's not unreasonable to be concerned where you have a property owner on many different locations and behind these properties, they will adjoin. And that's traffic. And that's what I wanted to present. That's all, whether I'm from Swampscott, Lynn, or California. Uh, so thanks for that. I and as the board knows, and I want to make clear, this is a board that's governed by the state statute and by the cases that it would decide. People who get notice are abutters or abutters to abutters within 300 feet. Those people are de determined to be what's called parties in interest. Right. They have a rebuttable presumption. And unless they can articulate a specific harm or injury to their property, they have no standing. So you can have somebody come here from Minnesota and express an opinion. But whether they rise to the level of people who have standing under the Massachusetts state statute or under the Lynn's own one is, is a different question. So uh, this board is terrific in letting people express their opinions. Right. But at some point, it's governed by what the state statute says and what the case law says. Yes, we agree. They have to be persons in interest. Anyone else wishing to speak so, against this? I'm not being impressed, but that means that when they had Swamp Scott Bobblehead, our attorney Natalia Rennie about Swan and Express our view, there's actually laws up in City Hall that uh, stifle that. Okay. Um, okay. Thank and you. I think that's what probably knowing attorney Vitali is bringing up a point about because he certainly would never um, you know, say anything about a woman talking. That's and it sounded to me like there's something about some kind of law in the place to be off. Thank you. That should be looked into. I'll, I volunteer to help them. Here, anyone else wants you to speak? We, we just, I do. Go ahead. My name's Bob Lavoie. Okay, and I'm from Swampscott, Mass. As well. Oh, yeah. Yep. 15 Cliff Road. Um, we we want to work it out, really, with these folks. Okay, we're not here to fight, you know, fight the laws or whatever, because we know it's a right of way, and we were told what the right of way does. Okay, but you just got to understand that all we're trying to do is protect protect her because she's been parking there for 60 years and then all of a sudden somebody springs it saying you can't park there anymore. Anybody would be upset with that one, okay? Any one of you who's parked there for 60 years would say, oh my God, what's going on? Okay, so um, as long as she gets parking, okay, and well, they, we can make some agreements yeah. and concessions with them, we'll work it out with Yeah, we're trying to work that out with a professional answer there. Mm -hmm. Understand. Yeah, I understand, but I'm not sure, okay, um, where the parking is. I, I know you can fit two cars there, okay? Well, well this gentleman... Well, uh, no, tell I understand. Tell All right, it, it'll, it'll, it'll show, but, the, you know, in the right of way, we'll still be there. And if you put one here and one right here, it's going to come like this, back to back. Mm -hmm. And this right of way will still exist. So I think, but as long as there's no restriction with parking right here because it's right next to them. And also, we, we've never had, we've never had Gary Giannino, the owner. We've never, we've never tried to interfere with someone else's parking. Yeah, no, our, I understand. Our, our issue was we had a right of way. We yeah. believed and we know we have the availability for one spot. What yeah. we were trying to do was meet the, meet the requirements for the parking. Mm -hmm. So that was our issue. What yeah. happened, uh, I think, just a misunderstanding because you know, you know, Mrs. Snowden was parking there, I thought she owned it. So we never said, right. and it was never our intention to take away anybody's parking. We're not trying to be bad neighbors. We've been yep. 
uh, we've made improvements. We, we bought a, a house that had a, uh, three inhabitants, and uh, we quickly realized it wasn't the correct way to do it, so we're, we're trying to do that. And we uh, got the, uh, looked through the requirement. We just have to sprinkle a hallway. At that point, it's, it's not that much more to sprinkle the whole house. So, so we're doing that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're invested in the community. Yeah, you have, when you have that other work, you've been in here before, and then it comes out nice. Right, right. We, we've been invested in the community. We continue to try to be a good neighbor in the community, haven't looked for anything other than what we think should be there. Thank you. Well, I have I one thing. One more question. Go ahead. Just so if you don't get approval for a, a three family, then you would most likely rent that out as a bedroom downstairs along with the apartment on the second on the main floor. Correct. Yeah. And we uh, we bought it looking for the as we bought it because it had bought it at some of our properties. Uh, we look for it as as a three. Uh, we know it was was operated as a three family for years and years and years. I don't know if the existing tenants caused any problems in the neighborhood or not. You know, we have to. We're going to clean up the back area, which we don't know what they were trying to do back mm -hmm. there. What's that? The courtyard you're talking about? The mm -hmm. area with the round granite. Yes. Yes. That's and beautiful in there. And yeah, yeah, they're going to move that. Kind of, we're trying to make it. Yeah. Something nice. Something nice. Be it a place to sit, be it the right. last thing we want people just to congregate there, but something. So. I do want to commend you for what you did for the people who's had the big fire. Well, thank you. You know, I thought that was very neighborly of you to have that last Friday night and to have people be able to go down and give gift cards or clothing or whatever and that you gave a portion of the receipts for Friday night. That was very enabling. Thank you. We gave uh, 20% of our sales. So we, uh, we wrote the check today. So, and we did, uh, I think it was $11.80. Oh. So, and, and we had some gift cards and we had some raffle receipts. So yeah. We did a similar function in, uh, with uh, a fire in Cambridge. And we don't have a restaurant in Cambridge, but uh, we knew some of the people. So we had our own fire and know what we did with those 19 residents and we made sure uh, we had, uh, Red Cross did a great job that morning, that early morning, but we made sure we got the people to the hotels that got them to, we paid for Uber, we, we couldn't take people in the car. And the MBTA was great that morning with the bus, so, uh, and we're trying to, it's been a long process to rebuild that property. You know we've, Incurred some noise in the neighborhood, but we try to do it as quickly and efficiently as possible. So, all you're hoping for is you're going to have two parking spaces. Is that what you're hoping? I guess. <laughs> no, 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 I'm asking. Yeah. That's your main concern is to be able to park two cars down there. Yeah. Well, only, and I'll tell you the reason why. It's because there's so that. That whole area has been uh, converted. A lot of those houses have been converted from um, single family to full families or something Listen, like that. Listen, I live around the corner. And, and, and they all you come. don't have so to right? tell me. I all live right. right around the corner. So you understand. And a lot of those big vans uh, that you probably saw through the summer, they live in, at 300 Lynchwood Drive. But they won't allow them in their parking spaces over there. But they come up over in Hunt Street. You know, so that's not fair. If they're taking our spaces. Yeah. You know, it, it's just not fair to do. I don't know if they could, if you could petition for residential parking. I don't know if you could do that down there, but it's. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, probably not because of the beach. Because of the beach. beach. Yeah, because of the beach. Yeah. And that's why we live there. <laughs> because of the beach. Do you, any other questions from the board? I have none. There's a motion. Do you have any? Uh, no. I think you need to change the clock because everybody. Well, I just, I know, I just noticed it when we came in that it doesn't work. <laughs> 
Hearing no objections, the hearing is closed for those that are against this petition. What is the wish of the board? I move the petition be granted with the stipulation. Uh, could you come up, Mr. and uh, give our secretary the wording on that stipulation that if the uh, professional lands today would take care of all the parking spaces, and then you add some other letter here to be included, and in you do. Yeah, could you email it to Mary? Email. Excuse me, what do you want to When we decided about the other parking spaces, the other the other two that you're going to give. I understood from Mr. Callan he wants a plan that shows everybody's parking spaces. Right. right. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm mean, just saying yeah. about yeah, the two the two parking spaces out front that really aren't legal that he No, that's why we came right. I understand that. Yeah. And uh, the two, see, you know what bothers me? I'm not going to tell you that I'm against this. I'm not going to tell you I'm for it either. I'm, I, what bothers me is those two buildings that you own over there, that has been grandfathered, that anybody can park any place, and you don't have enough parking for those, all those people that live there. And they all have to find places to park. And it bothers me that I'm going to take two parking spaces away from the people that are over there to give it to this new place so that you can have another tenant. That, that bothers me. Well, but that's because the requirements of the city of Lynn's own ordinance say you need X amount of spaces of X, Y design. Yeah. And so I, I've used this analogy before, okay? Uh, I don't do puzzles, but my wife does. And when you have a jigsaw puzzle, I tell people, if you move one piece on the board, it affects other pieces. And, and that's what you're saying. I hear you. Yeah. But we've had this conversation They'll tell you, the first thing I said is, oh, don't do anything to the landscape. Because I thought the property was... It's lovely. Lovely, that's what I'm saying. But, but it's a trade-off. There's only so much space, there's only so much room, and we're trying to accommodate the, the need for parking. And, and, and then they're, they're an unusual petitioner, and they, they have access to other parking. There are other people who come before you who don't. And, you, and then you're forced to make a choice. As, Okay, is three better than none? Or is, is five what's required and they only have three? I mean, it's a, it's a choice you have to make. But here, we're, we are fortunate that we've got enough spaces and enough land and access that we can meet the requirement. Not there for are people, all those apartments you cut. Not for there all is people. no requirement for those apartments. I understand that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't bother me but just I, because but, that was But then that goes now. to when the city of Lynn, where, where was the city of Lynn when they, they finally adopted a parking requirement when? 1964. There was zoning here since 1925. Automobiles didn't appear in Lynn in 1964. They were here long before. And, and you have right now in the Central Business District. What's the parking required in the Central Business District? None. And you have every day people coming and making investments wanting to put more activity in the Central Business District. So that what's going to happen is that there's going to be a pressure It's going to be on those city lots. The city has parking. The one person who owns parking in this downtown area is the city of Lynn. And, and, and there was a movement to take meters out, to do, they're trying to balance. Uh, but, that, but there are always trade-offs. And I think what you're trying to do, and no one ever falls aboard, because I think anybody that understands that your objective is to try to do what's in the city's interest. But when there's something I think that has more good than bad, it seems to me to sort of, that's why the scales of justice are the scales of justice. You balance it. Well, that's I think why there's I'm more having good. a hard time balancing. Well, but, because if that third apartment wasn't there, those two parking spaces we wouldn't be taking away from the people who live in the other buildings. If, if I can interject, I know it was a legal apartment, but the apartment was there for years. So I mean, I, yeah, anybody who walked inside, I, sorry, knew I that. I sort of look at it, we're not really increasing a, a car. Production. Well, you look at it because you yeah, own it. Oh, sure. Yeah, but I'm like saying it, what was there to what we're doing, it, it, we, you could use the argument we're taking one car off the street by using the right of way into the back of the spot, space. You could, you could also say they have the argument that no one's ever going to walk that 100 yards from the building to that back space. They're going to park right out in front of the building like everybody else does and walk right in. They're gonna to try to jam two and three cars in behind the building instead of that one parking space that's allotted back there too. I have a lot of the same I trouble in my mind that, that the chairman, chairwoman does. And I mean, I'm trying to wrap my head around. At the end of the day, the right of way isn't the issue here. 
the parking is the issue, and adding the third, the third residence to this building is the issue. That, and that's the issue that we've all been you know, struggling with. I know everybody on the board has a different opinion, but it was being used illegally as a three family. Does he have the opportunity to fix that, that it's not being illegally used as a three family? And if we say no, yes, you could easily increase a bedroom down there for, for unit one, but that's not going to add three cars like adding another apartment would either, though. So there's arguments on both sides. It isn't sides whether it adds reason. cars, whether the requirement Same. for an added car is I sat here and listened to you for a half hour. I'm just, I've talked for two minutes, so let me finish. And I'm not, even said, I'm not even saying I'm against it. I'm just saying I'm struggling with the fact that it's not about the right of way. I find it hard to believe that people are going to walk into an already crowded parking lot and look for a parking space because I'll guarantee people are going to park in those two that were allotted to this, this building for an apartment that we're trying to jam into an already busy area. Like the people that sat here before you. They wanted to add a three family, two family to a three family in an already busy area. That's, that's, the, that's the, the issue at hand here is the area, the density, and the apartment. It also is the parking formula. Because the parking formula makes a big assumption, okay? There are plenty of people who live in single-family homes that have more than two cars. There are plenty of people who live in apartments that have no cars. But the formula is across the board, and the formula is arbitrary. So that's the formula. We're trying to meet the formula. It could very well be that in this if it was a three-unit that there might only be three cars, one for each unit. Because right now, with, with two, we've got two cars, okay? So I could argue, well, we're gonna add a unit, but that doesn't mean we're gonna have five cars, it means we're gonna maybe have three. And we got parking for three, but the on question, our land. The question isn't whether the formula's right or the formula's wrong, is are you trying to force what you're trying to do, or does it just fall into place and happen because you've got the amount of space you need? We're, I guess we're, we're the trying question, to right? follow what the building department said when they came down. They said this unit needs another means of egress, mm -hmm. and if it's a three-family, you need to sprinkle. Mm -hmm. These people said okay. So that satisfies the building code. Now we've got this, the zoning code, and if anything, these people can meet the zoning code requirement. Whether it's a good requirement or a smart requirement or one that's even going to be required, in reality, remains to be seen. But if the requirement is that you have to have, and the zone ordinance. They did draft the zone ordinance says you can park within 200 feet if you have an apartment house use. That's what the ordinance says. So are they taking advantage of what the ordinance says? The answer is yes. You know that room that's a, you know the room that's across from the kitchen? It's on the way to the bathroom and it says storage. Mm -hmm. And then you have that other room in the back it's more storage or whatever. See, when I look at that with a window in it, I see wall and bedroom. Does utility I'm just that No, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the one that says it's wide open in the middle of the house. And it's wide open. Yeah. Like, are you going to, like, oh, I'm sure he knows it. Are you going to have storage there if that's wide open? Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like this room across from the kitchen, you're going to store stuff. Our, our intention yeah? is not to rent it out as a bedroom. Now, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. As you said, you look at rooms, and you can make a dining room, you can make a living room a bed. That's yeah. not our intention. Of our, our properties, we do an annual uh, walk through our apartments to make sure we don't have overcrowding. You know, we'll, as we look at that, it's a one bedroom apartment. That's what we're gonna rent it out as. We're not gonna rent it out as a two bedroom. So that could be like a dining area? It certainly isn't gonna be storage. I mean, the whole room is wide open. What are you going to store? In the washer and dryer and the utility room, there's no room for another bedroom. Well, you can keep. We're not. It's not our. We're not going to rent that out as a two bed. I mean, we, we looked at that. We saw it was already in a, a parking legal as a, as I, as it was, and we're just trying to rectify that. But we're not. You know, we're not adding any part to the building. Is is. Uh, turning to Kelly, said we're trying to meet the code and trying to do it the correct way. You know, as to the rest of the things. You can well, for, for me to even consider this, you would have to, at the back, right at the back, you know, where that beautiful 
circle or brick thing is, you, then as you did with some parking over there, you'd have to designate, you'd have to put a, a gate or something there <coughs> so that the people in that house can just walk right from there, from that parking spot to get in and not have to walk the whole length of that place. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's mm -hmm. in a parking plane. You're talking about the two spots that are Right. Yeah, there is going to be a gate. They're not going to walk over the top of the walk over. No, I mean, you want to, I want you to show this me where you're going to make the gate. This is what I need to talking about, too. You're talking about this area right here. Or right, right here. Right there. Yeah. Where the back of the house is. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mr. Wood said the same thing. He wanted it closer. Right he wanted it closer. Because originally you had it way down the other right. end. Yeah. And, and that's why Mr. Callan wants And I don't to blame. think anybody's going to, like they say, walk all that distance. If you put a gate or something right there, the, the back door. You're going to mention that to the Lancer there, right? Yes. You, well, I'm going to get the notes from Mary. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. And, and part of the agreement is going to be the uh, written agreement between the two parties that are going to be sharing the cost of. That's what my letter yeah. says. That's it's what's a letter right here. Yeah. 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 So that would be we have uh, we have buildings yeah. in the area. We don't really own many single family homes. Uh, we're more apartments, larger properties up there. Yeah, but there. that's a delicious place. It, that's it, delicious. And that was the only thing that interested us for the I want to tell you two corners for the thumb of the beauty, the aesthetic, yeah. the little area in the back, is yeah. the, the brick oasis. Yeah. Uh, so, but we have, my point was there, we have some of the plots, so. Yeah, the granite, the granite circle, right? Plant plenty of geraniums. Man, I don't have plots. So nice. They're very hardy. I use a lot of geraniums. Yeah. It used to be a hot tap. They used to be a hot tap. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? We're not doing that because it's better than pushing up daisies. <laughs> what is the wish of the board? We can go on and on and on here. What I is the wish of the board? To grant. To grant with stipulations. Yeah. And the stipulations being? Let's say what the stipulations are. Stipulations are that they have a professional answer there. And make a master plan of all this parking, and then to include this letter, did you say? And that, that's that's what I proposed to Attorney uh, yeah. McGloin, and yeah. I understood that that was agreeable. Yeah, so that will be in that plan too, right? We can. Yeah, we're, we're going to do we're going to do a plan, but that 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 letter is going to be memorialized in an agreement between myself and Attorney McGloin. And then we're going to attach, as I said, a segment or a sketch. Make sure that Mary gets all the information on that. Who is the Senator McGloin representing? Mrs. Snow. Oh, why didn't she get that? Uh, she told me she couldn't be here. She, she called and contacted me at the end of last week. I know she went to the property, then she contacted me again. And then we had a discussion after she had talked with Mrs. Snowden, and then she called to tell me today she wouldn't be here, and then I said I would represent to the board, and I sent it first to her, and then I would present it to the board. We had met with her this morning, yeah. okay, and yeah. she couldn't make it. Mr. Woods, did you did you second yeah. that? Did you want to say anything, Mr. Cole? Just this the the whole issue of the conversions is something the Diamond District, as we've been pretty adamant about. Yeah. I, I don't know how many we've granted, but we've denied majority yeah. of them because yeah. of it, yeah. setting a precedent, yeah. and we got to consider that. Well, and, it's not, and it's not about. Uh, if someone could do a good job, it's these guys. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with, to me, the feels forced. Yeah, uh, we're doing it. We, you know, we've been, like I said, those areas are uh, tremendously dense, and the parking is is horrendous. And uh, the state caused part of that by lim taking 300 spaces out of the, the yeah, high beach. Why did they do that? They took spaces off the beach. Yeah. Yeah. 300. So they end up in your 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 yeah. Yeah. But uh, again, we've been pretty consistent. That's all I'm going to say on the issue. And I had to go up. Uh, one, of, one of the trucks kept on parking in front of my house.
house, and I was trying to rent my apartment, all right, because we have two townhouses. And uh, I went up to him and I said, do you see that sign? I said, I'm trying to rent this apartment, but they can't even see the sign because your truck is so big, it covers everything. All right, so he didn't speak very good uh, English. And he said, well, they won't let me park over there where I live. I said, well, you better find someplace else to park. And that was just one of are we, are we voting here uh, to continue this case so we see? No, we're good. Well, Alan, wait a minute. Are we voting yes, to continue this place, to, this, the, to see the parking, if it's, it's going to be enough room for her to have two spaces? What was and, the motion? Hmm? What was the motion? Mr. Calvin. To grant. What was your motion? To grant. He made a motion. Oh, okay. okay. To grant with stipulations. Is that the motion? Yeah, yeah. the stipulation that a master plan by the professional land surveyor for oh. all the parking be prepared. But do we think we would rather see that before we grant? They vote on the motion, right? They vote on the motion, right? Hmm? They vote on the motion that they vote, right? Isn't the vote just to give her something she already had anyway? No. More? Do you, you know what the vote is asking? So we're going to give her more than that. see the plan for us? Yeah. <laughs> we have a motion on the table. Yeah, call the roll. Well, I want to know what I'm calling the roll for. The grant. The grant. Motion was made and seconded. Who seconded it? I did. Mr. Wood. Get the Please, motion made by Mr. Callum to grant with stipulation, seconded by Mr. Wood. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood? Yes, to grant. Mr. Gisano? No. Mr. Cole? No. Mr. Callum? Yes, to grant. Mrs. Cole? No. That's why I wanted to do it the other way. And that's no representation on you, gentlemen. The government do a, do a fine job in the city. This one just feels forced to me. So. I'm not going to apologize, but I figured I'd explain it to you. It's, it's no representation of what you guys do. 